الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه. ودي برادس السيسترس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. During the time of the administration of سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب and سيدنا عمر الفاروق was ruling over the ummah and he became after سيدنا أبو بكر the leader of the believers أمير المؤمنين. He appointed, or maybe before him, Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As was appointed and ruling over Egypt. He was the wali, the minister, the responsible for Egypt. And it has been reported that during that time, his son, he used to have a camel and people used to raise over there. It's just like today we have cars and everyone He's trying to have the nicest car. And his son was racing the others with his camel. And one day, a Copt a Christian, who's a native Egyptian, his camel beat the one of the son of Amir al Mu'minin, or the son of the Wadi. And he, that was the first time the son of Amr ibn al As was actually beat. So he got angry and enraged, and he took a whip and hit the Christian, the Copt, with it, and told him, how can you beat me? How can you be faster than me? And I'm the son of the honorable. I'm the son of the ruler. I'm the son of the minister. How could you allow yourself that? So the Christian cried and said, I will file a complaint to Amir al-Mu'minin, the leader of the believers, Umar ibn Khattab, so when the case was brought in front of Umar, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab told him, we in Islam, we rule by justice. And he told him, take this whip and hit him as you have hit him. I give it back to him. A whip for a whip. And then after that he said, go ahead and whip his father, Amr. Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As was a Sahabi. So the Copt, the Christian said, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, O ruler or leader of the believers, I don't have a problem with his father. His father didn't do anything to me. So Sayyidina Umar ibn al Khattab said, Do it. Because it was for his father's position, for his father's standing. That was the reason that allowed his son to go way out of life. And then Sayyidina Umar, the Amr ibn al-As on his head, on his uh, bold head, he told him, Ya Amr, since when have you made the human beings as servants and slaves when their mothers have brought them to this world as free men? And everyone, every human being, irrespective of his religion, irrespective of anything, has been born a free human being. How can you allow it? And what gives you the permission to enslave them and make them slaves? And this word Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab uttered and said is the reason why the Sahaba and why the Ummah at that time became what it became. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has general rulings general laws, that's what we call Sunan Ilahiya, which are applicable to every time in every space, and which are applicable to every human being. And one of the most important of them is the justice. And when we say justice, then we mean complete justice. The justice that doesn't make a difference between Muslim or non-Muslim, the justice that doesn't make a difference between man, male or female. The justice that doesn't make a difference and distinguish between nationalities or whatsoever. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all mankind equal. And every one of us is the son of Adam. And Adam is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Sahaba and when the Islamic Ummah understood that principle, and implemented that principle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that ummah to what it is now, or to what it was back then. And when we 
went astray and derived away from that principle and moved away from the principle of justice and this started little by little after the death of Sayyidina Umar this was the beginning of the end of this Ummah and their Ummah has reached the standards and the limits we see nowadays and if we look at the Islamic countries Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has punished the so-called Islamic countries for a reason if we go to our countries it is corruption lying injustice and all of that and therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help and will support a nation a state that is not Islamic because they are just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support the justice and grant it from his benefits even if they're not Muslims and this is what we see nowadays you have Europe you have Northern America where to a very big extent you have a freedom of speech you have a freedom of religion you have freedom of everything you have before all of that you have the basic human rights you are considered and conceived as a human being and I'm sorry to say that, but if I'm wrong, then someone should prove me wrong. In an Islamic country, the so-called today's Islamic countries, the human being is not even perceived as a human being. Let's not go ask too much and, and, and ask for freedom of rights or anything, but they're not even treated as human beings. And it's easy for us and better for us. We can actually practice our Islam in those countries that some Muslim calls countries of kufr better than our, in our Islamic countries I've been to the US and I grew up in Europe and I've seen Canada and you see especially in the Ramadan the Muslims living the spiritual aspect of Ramadan like nowhere else you have an iftar I just now was checking uh, uh, some of my friends sent me pictures from over 10 cities in Germany and the uh, MSA, the student association over there each student association in, in the respective town and city was organizing an open air iftar like they had an iftar outside and where did they have it? in the university the University of Munich, University of Berlin, University of Frankfurt and so on and so forth told them you can have our facilities and they had an open air iftar and over 2,000 people were attending in each city. If we see here, alhamdulillah, the city grants us and gives us the city hall or whatever, any hall, any stadium, anything to celebrate our Eid and have Salat al-Eid over there. And therefore, we have actually reached a state that is un... or, or a situation that is un... Uh, or that has never occurred in the history of Islamic country... Uh, or, or of Islamic history that Muslims leave Islamic countries to go and live in non-Islamic countries not for economic reasons, not for political reasons, but for religious reasons. And I dare you to name me a country where you can actually live the Islam, not, not have a better life, have a, a more wealthy, a prosperous life. I'm telling you a more religious life than he has it here. Alhamdulillah, we have right across the street the Faith Academy, Islamic Elementary School. We have here the Masjid, we can do whatever we want. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants that benefit and grants this peace and this calmness and everything you have and that freedom to those who are just, even though if they're not Muslim. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought the victory and the wealth and prosperity to the Muslims through people, through a generation like Sayyidina Umar, Uthman, Ali, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and those Sahaba. Why? Because they had the justice. And the first persons to apply the justice on were themselves. Sayyidina Umar started with himself and with his son and with his family. And his son, the son of the Amir al-Mu'mineen was just a normal kid like every other kid. And one day Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar, 
he had uh, his, his sheep, and said, Omar looked at the sheep and he said, wow, how come they're overweight? Where did you get that from? You're not that, 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 uh, you're not that good in business. And he said, Wallahi, my father, I just go to the dwell and, and, and feed and let them drink like everyone else. So I said, Omar said, yes, you're right, like everyone else. Because when you come at the dwell and everyone is with you, they will say, make space for the son of Amir al Mu'mineen. Give water, water to the sheep of the son of Amir al Mu'mineen. So Sayyidina Umar told him, let's see the average of, of uh, the milk every sheep has, and let's see how much more you have. And that difference, I'll cut it off from you and put it into the state yeah, treasury. This is the secret behind it. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the state of an ummah until it changes itself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go with the justice, the complete justice, even though if those who implement the justice are non-Muslims. The other thing, the hisab, the kufr, the non-belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with in the akhirah. But in the human relationship, the relationship between human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at that thing. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, it is a pity to see that non-Muslims are closer to our religions than we are ourselves. And it's a pity to say that the city of Hall, or, or if I go have a business with a non-Muslim, or if I go apply for a job or somewhere, I actually abide by those rules and I actually become justice and become correct and everything if I'm dealing with a non-Muslim or with, if I did it with an official site and I actually behave and then when I'm going coming to my Muslim brother or coming to the masjid or coming anywhere else all of those principles are gone and unfortunately this mentality from our countries we still have it here and we'll still put it where when we come to the masjid when we come to the other things if I have a non-Muslim who is actually uh, who I'm owing money to, or if I get someone to my home to, to build me something, I'll make it on time to pay him. And I won't delay a, a single day. If I would go to a place, to a school, to the public schools and everything with my family, I tell my kids to behave and be quiet and be good and be ha ha ha. But if I come to the masjid, then it's fine. Leave your stuff. Don't wash behind you, don't do whatever. If I'm with my Muslim brother, those principles seem to be unnecessary and not mandatory. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, those are small things, but they have a big impact on our entire life. And if you see the mess now in the Arab countries, it goes, it goes to that. That each individual is corrupt, knows only the lie, knows only, not the straight way, but the way of like this and like, you know it. And therefore, if everyone is like this, we don't wonder why an entire nation, why an entire woman is like this. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to get back to the life of the Sahaba, the life of the Prophet, and understand it correctly. Understand why Sayyidina Umar is Sayyidina Umar, and why he is the Farooq, and why Sayyidina Abu Bakr is Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And why Sayyidina Ali is Imam Ali, radiallahu anhu arda, and why the Ummah has become to what it is, and has become a role model to the others. To conclude, we want to get rid of that thinking that I don't want to, I want to do business, but please brother let me do a business with a Kafir instead of a Muslim. Because if I do a business with a Muslim, things are going to turn up and so on. And I know that, that thinking has been, become common among us. You know what? I want to have something fixed in the masjid. Let's just get some American or some Jew or some anything who is a non-Muslim, but I won't have any headache. He'll come, I'll give him his money, he'll do the job on time. If I get a brother, a Muslim, akhfillah, that's where the problem and headache starts. And as long as we don't fix that, we will never, ever fix the state of the ummah. And this problem is not a minor problem, it is a major, major problem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just person. 
And our situation where we lie in is entirely our fault and due to our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best.